Hey everyone, it's good to be back here with you guys and uh, things are really changing, aren't they? Uh, from week to week, things are really getting better. And uh, I'm gonna kind of change. I've been talking about what we do in time of isolation and stuff, but here's something that I think is gonna be worthy for uh, every day of our life and has been in the days gone by. And that is fighting for our families. And families could be, uh, a definition of family could be, you know, a couple, it could be a uh, you know, husband and wife, it could be a, a daughter and a mom, or you could have a, a nation like I have, you know, with all these kids and grandkids. But uh, regardless of the definition, or excuse me, or the description of your family, it's worthy to be fighting for. And I'm going to use the walls in, in, around Jerusalem during Nehemiah's time, if I could do that out of the book of Nehemiah. He, uh, he just had a heart for the city and the walls were broken down. And there was gaps in the walls where people could just go through and the, the walls were only about a third or a quarter of the height that they used to be, all into rubble and, and trash and the stones were burnt, it says. And gosh, I, I look at families today and so many of our families are like that. The walls are broken and, oh, they still might have st uh, uh, stability and they still may have, you know, walls that kind of crawl them together and, you know, it defines them as a family. But so many times there's gaps in those walls. And, you know, whether it's uh, anybody's fault or not, I, I, you know, I really can't say, but sometimes our, our workload or the lack of work or maybe substance abuse and maybe even physical abuse that has taken place in someone's life that causes our walls to crumble. Well, Nehemiah in the natural walls around Jerusalem, he, he had a burden to fix those walls and, and he had opposition, he had opposition coming. Sam Ballot came and some others and they were hating them and wanting to bring confusion and in fact, they said this didn't even confuse them that the workers would stop. But well, I don't know if you know this, the Bible says where there's confusion, so lies all wickedness. And they just were wicked and they wanted to bring an end to it. And you know, people really like to see failure. I mean, we always talk about the love and a good success story, but if we can find failure close to us or around us, then it makes us look like we're successful. And uh, so there, there's always those critics out there, regardless of the critics in your life. Regardless of the people that may know your past that nobody else knows, uh, I don't want them to put fear in your heart. I don't want them to, to stop your work of building up the walls around your family. I, I, I really believe that this is a great time for us. Listen, we've had all this isolation uh, in the past and you know we were stuck with our families and we're kind of going, wow, I, I see things maybe I've never saw before. I wish it was like this more often when we had time together because we haven't spent the quality time as a family. And uh, so I, I want to read something to you if I may, real quick. Can I do that real quick? Um, oh, he said this. Uh, this. This is out of chapter 4 of Nehemiah. He, he, when, they, when Sam Ballad and those others were coming to give him a bad time and the workers were losing courage, he said, I'm going to put you out by tribes, behind the walls, in the gaps, everywhere, everywhere that the enemy could come in. And listen, I think we need to put ourselves, I think we need to position ourselves around our family where there is weakness that we can take a stand that the enemy can't come in through those cracks or climb over the wall into our life. I want to say that again, I think this is a good word for all of us, position yourself. For me, if I was going to position myself, I think I, I think I would be an encourager in my family. That, the, that would be my position or one who would set a standard in this household. Maybe not my children's household, but my household. This would be my standard and that would be my position. And I think we need to position ourselves in our homes and our families and, and, and whatever you're good at, that's the position you need to take. He said, well, those who have swords I'll put here and those who have spears I'll put over here. He, he strategically found positions, Nehemiah did, for the workers of the wall. Find your your position, find your strategic position. But this is where I want to get to, and I gotta flip the page here, and I gotta slip my glasses on, so bear with me for just a moment here. And then he said this, he said this to the nobles and to the leaders and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid. We all like change, oh, well, let me restate that. We all want change, but sometimes we don't like change. It's difficult to make something happen that's never happened before. And listen, when you try it on your, on your own strength and you try it on your own mind and your own wisdom, it very seldom succeeds. But I believe in the power of prayer and seeking the one that has given you a position, position in your home. I, I believe if we do that, I think we will see change. And he says this, and I say that because he says, don't be afraid. And sometimes we're afraid of change. And he says this, remember the Lord, great and awesome. 
This is a good place to pause for a moment. Remember him. So often we remember the circumstances and situations. We're gazing at a broken down wall or a broken family and that's where we seem to remember more than the Lord who is great and awesome. I, I want to uh, maybe just pause right after this and just kind of close your eyes, maybe sit in a corner somewhere and just God, just got to remember who you are and the great things that you've done. Let me finish reading this here. I keep stopping, I apologize for that. He says, uh, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord great and awesome and fight, listen to this, this is, and fight. Uh, we always told our kids, no fighting in school. And then somebody hits you and they knock them out, right? Well, uh, but we, we, we're always saying that be a peacemaker, not a fighter. But this is what the Lord says through his prophet. He says, and fight for your brethren. Fight for your sons, for your daughters, for your wives and your house. <sighs> Nehemiah found it worthy to fight for them. I got a secret for you. As you read down a little further, and it, it get down to verse 20, he says here, he says, if, and if we rally together when we hear the trumpet, when we go to fight, and we hear the, if we hear the, the trumpet blow, when we're going to battle, he says, your God, our God, will fight for us. Hey, you don't have to fight for your family alone. When the battles come, God will give you the strength, the wisdom, and the, and the courage to stand for what is right. It's easy to compromise because we don't want to mess up things. It's easy to wink when we see things happen in our home that we don't like. It's sometimes just the easier route. Fighting isn't taking the easy route. Fighting is setting a standard. So let me recap. Fight for your family. Find your right position and get in your position. One of the tribes that he put out there was a tribe of Levi. They were praisers. In the midst of the battle, give praise to God. And remember this. When you fight for your brethren, and you fight for your sons, and you fight for your daughters, and you fight for your wives, and your husbands, and for your house, God will fight for you. Anyway, I hope that blessed you. It blessed me being here with you today. I love you guys, miss you. I've gotten to see a couple of you guys face to face over this last week, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all real soon. Well, God bless you, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.